Welcome everyone to Beyond Surviving, the safe space for survivors of childhood sexual abuse to receive support, resources, and share their stories. Beyond Surviving is about freedom, healing, connection, and even laughter and fun. Most importantly, it's about letting go of the pain of abuse and finally moving on. I'm Rachel Grant, and for those of you who don't yet know me, I've been a sexual abuse recovery coach since 2007, and I'm the author of Beyond Surviving, the final stage of recovery from sexual abuse. You can learn more about me and the Beyond Surviving program at rachelgrantcoaching.com. All right, y'all, today I have here with me the fabulous Tammy Mobley, who is going to be sharing with us about her journey of healing from domestic violence so that she could really go on to become an empowering voice for women and teens. She has just this undeniable passion for women and youth. I actually found Tammy on social media was where we first connected. And I was like, wait, what is she talking about? And I was just so drawn in, you know, by her message and her intention and her charisma and how far she's come. And boy, she's done a lot in the years. She's facilitated hundreds of workshops on healthy relationships and conflict resolution, effective communication, teen dating violence and sexual responsibility. She is a trauma-informed master trainer. (laughs) I love that title. (laughs) And uh, she's also the United State of Women uh, Ambassador for Virginia and the founder of Real Girls, an empowerment program that provides safe spaces for girls to foster healthy relationships. Lord, Lord, did I need that when I was a teenager. Yeah, Tammy, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm excited to be here and I'm excited to share and I'm excited, excited to share space with you. Amazing. So I thought we'd start off today by just hearing a little bit of your story, your journey. What would you um, like to share with our listeners today about that? Um, so I'm excited. You know, October is always a special month for me. It's a domestic violence awareness month. I mean, we know that one in three women are in an unhealthy, abusive relationship, and I was one of those one in three women. So when I was growing up, I witnessed abuse. My father was very abusive to my mother. So I don't think that I even had the tools or even knew what a healthy relationship looked like. Mm. So as I grew up and got into my own relationships, probably any of them, to be honest with you, were help were healthy. You know, I've ended up with people that weren't um the best for me. I didn't make the best choices. And then I finally ended up marrying someone that was very abusive emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, and it ended up poorly for um, both of us. Mm, Yeah. Thank you for saying a little bit about that. You know, I think the first thing you bring up is just modeling, right? Like, oh my gosh. So, um, you know, we often, we can only sometimes we know what we know (laughs) and we, you know, we don't have healthy, strong models or mentors, somebody who comes in even to just speak into our life to say, Hey, there's another way. Yeah. We kind of continue and repeat that pattern. And certainly when we have trauma in our younger years, then kind of the choices that we make in relationship and the motivations and like why we're there. And, and I wonder if you could speak a little bit to, you know, when you look back on, you know, those relationships, what do you recall, you know, was kind of going on for you um, that, um, that played a part in, you know, being in those relationships? I believe, especially the, I always talk more about the, um, the last one with my ex-husband, that was the Mm. most abusive relationship. I believe that my self-worth wasn't where it should have been. Mm -hmm. You know, I had already had a child. I was a teen mom and then meeting him and he was this really good looking guy, right? A lot Mm -hmm. of women love him. Of course, abusers, they have that charisma. They have that charm, Mm -hmm. right? That you're going to go ahead and actually Mm -hmm. naturally gravitate to them. And for him to just purchase a, like a lot of things for me you know I remember one time we were in a relationship that we went back and forth and I remember one time we broke up and I moved into my own apartment and somehow he got into my apartment but when I got in there like my whole apartment was furnished uh, yeah like literally like everything was furnished um things like that um and then just 
not even seeing those as red flags, mm. you know, not even knowing that they were red flags. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. So I have some fire in me anyway, you know, <laughs> so if someone's going to say something, we're going to go ahead and argue back and things like that. But even a little things that I didn't notice is that we were going out. And if I went out with my girlfriends, he would be there. Like now I know that's stalking, but I didn't know that was stalking before. Me and my girlfriends would laugh and just say, oh, that's Tammy's crazy boyfriend. Mm. We would just laugh it off, but not even know that that was a red flag that I should have been looking out for. Um, Things like that I couldn't really have a lot of friends, especially male friends. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that that was a red flag at at the time. I was very, very young. Um, And then just, like I said, already having a child for him to say, me thinking, well, he's taking care of me and my son. Like he's doing what he's supposed to do. How many other men would do this for me? Again, in my young mind, not even knowing my worth saying, you know what? But there probably are other men that's going to come Yeah. Right. But at the time, you're not even thinking about that. Yeah, I can really appreciate that. You know, the 10 years that I spent, we were together for 10, married for three. And it was definitely one of those relationships that shouldn't have lasted more than, you know, three months. <laughs> and we also had lots of like breakups and disconnections. And, you know, I look back on it now, I'm like, oh gosh, there were so many opportunities, right? So many moments to be done. And I just kept going back. And then and really like that space of not believing that I was deserving of better. And my, my, um, ex-husband was also particularly good at the this will all be better when you're better lingo did you run into that at all or like if you get yourself together this won't happen and you know what 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 my husband used to always say that all I had was a pretty face right so he minimized everything else any other kind of accomplishments that I had anything else that I did was all you had was a pretty face and that's all you you know gives this to um, people to the point like if I went out and somebody actually told me that I was pretty that would get angry with them Mm. because I would say I you know I knew that I was more than a pretty face but just hearing him say that and then being outside or if I was out um you know, if I, and someone saw my wedding ring, they was like, oh, you're married. Oh, your husband's probably so lucky. And I was thinking like, why is he lucky? Because you're seeing what's on the outside of me. So I dealt with a lot of that. So it took a lot of rebuilding for me to go ahead and start using my voice. And that's, you know, kind of like the platform I use right now. But at that time, I did not know that, you know, all growing up, that's all I used to hear, not even just from him, but like other men and other people oh, like you're sure. so pretty. So it's not like I didn't have anything else of value to give. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it, it's such a, a mind trip because yeah, you get really backed into this corner where, you know, you really feel like this is, this is it. This is the best you're going to do. And you should just right. be so, so, so grateful. Um, but it's so painful. And I really appreciate what you're saying about the perspective that we have in these moments. It's, I think I definitely want to make sure everybody listening, and I, I know you're sending this message too, that being in this kind of relationship, staying in this kind of relationship is, is not a, a character flaw. It's not a failure. There's like, there's so many things happening and and you miss a lot because you just don't know. You don't know those red flags. You don't know how to navigate a situation like this. And especially if I'm raised in a family with the mom that's been a, in a very unhealthy relationship. She was with my father since the age that she was 16 years oh, old. Oh, wow. Um, so she didn't know what a healthy relationship was. She stayed with him because she had two children, you know, and a, and a lot of women do that. It takes an average of seven times before someone leaves an unhealthy relationship. Right. So that back and forth is so normal with, you know, not only myself, but with a lot of people and we're going back and forth. And then when you actually want to tell somebody, you know, you're telling your girlfriend what he's doing this and they're saying, well, I would leave him and they're saying all this negative stuff. And you're like, you know, you want, you should leave, but your heart is not allowing you to leave. So then you start pushing yourself away from those people because you're saying, well, they don't know what I'm going through. So the isolation continues and you just continue in this cycle of isolation, of despair, of depression, and just leave, staying with that person because you don't think there is a way out. Yeah. I can, yeah, I absolutely relate to that for sure. When you would have conversations with yourself about 
the I should leave. I think that's a, such a really important point that somebody who you're in love with somebody who's being abusive is not abusive 100% of the time, 24 mm seven. -hmm. And so there's this duality that's happening. And certainly in the early days, right? Like you're falling in love and they're so great and everything is there. And you keep thinking like, oh, that will come back and we're just going to get back to that. And, and so, um, that, that hook, you know, that's there of the hope, right. That's that this will be better. This felt good at one point. And, we're not dealing with just like a monster, <laughs> you know, and this is right. a human, human being that sometimes loves and nurtures us. And that's why it gets just so convoluted and confusing. Did you go experience that too? Yeah. And, and that's the, the big part, even with um, my father, like I said, my father was very abusive to mm -hmm. my, my mother. She actually escaped from New York to Maryland. That's how she got out of that, oh, um, wow. that marriage with my father. But my father's new girlfriend um, that he was with before he passed, she never saw any abuse in him. She ne he never even oh. raised her voice. He was a totally different person that he was with her with with my um with my mother. And I could definitely see that because if you were to meet me and my ex husband, you would think like we were the best couple. Sure. Was, oh yeah. Right? Shine he on. Just, <laughs> yes. He was just so amazing. Yep. Like everybody liked mm -hmm. him, right? So you would not know that. And those are the things that I think is where abusers that we hold on to that goodness in them. What made us fall in love with them? Yeah. What's making us happy at that moment? But then when they turn the other cheek, that's when you're like, I want to leave. But again, like you said, Rachel, it's not the abuse is not all the time. And I think that's what's so confusing, not only for uh, the survivors and the victims, for other people also, when they say, right. well, why don't you leave? Because it's not, I'm not getting abused every single day, every minute of the day. But those moments that has happened is bad, but it's just not happening all the time. All the time. What was the, the final straw for you? What happened that made it possible for you to finally get out of that situation? So what happened, a lot of people asked me, they say, how did you leave? And I said, I actually did not leave. My, my, the last time my um, ex-husband was with me, he um, beat me badly. I was pistol whipped. Um, I was beaten badly. And then mm -hmm. he um, died by suicide. So okay. I was not, one of them that just said, okay, I've had enough. I'm going mm -hmm. to leave. Um, I was planning to leave because when that happened, we know when you leave, that's the most dangerous time in right. the survivor's life. So that's exactly what happened to me as well. It was very, very dangerous. That's mm -hmm. when the abuse escalated to, you know, the level of no return. And I think he realized that and he died by suicide instead of us going to court and going through um, everything. See. Gosh, my heart breaks about that. I mean, what a what a convoluted moment in your life that must have been of relief, grief, yeah. sadness, despair. I can only imagine holding all of that and then coming out to the other side of it with strength <laughs> and the capacity that you have. So cheers to you, lady. That's that's no easy path that you've had to walk. Um and I'll name in my circumstance as well, I didn't leave. I didn't muster the courage or, you know, figure it out or any of that. My husband had an affair and said, I found the, the woman of my dreams and I'm leaving. And I fought for him. Like, this is where, like, when I look back at it now, I'm like, oh, girlfriend, what were you doing? But I fought and was like, no, 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 no. Like, we have to work this out. We're going to figure it out. But you know, thank God he removed himself from my life in a way. And um, I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through that as well. Thank you. And, you know, I think sharing our stories is just so important because, you know, to me, it matters because I want people to know that yeah, finding yourself in this kind of circumstance and situation is common, number one, unfortunately, um, and that there are lots of ways that we find our way out of these circumstances and situations and that there's life on the other side. And um, 
And I know that you've gone on to just do so many amazing things. So let's take just a quick break. And then I, I want to come back. I want to talk a little more about red flags and kind of even just do a little laundry list, a little inventory of what people can okay. be <laughs> thinking about. Um, and then I want to explore more about the, the work you're doing with youth so that we can break this cycle sooner. Yeah. So we'll just take a quick break and we'll be right back. Have you ever felt like you've tried everything to heal from the pain of sexual abuse and yet nothing seems to be really helping? Well, one of the reasons why most people struggle to break free from the pain of past child abuse is because the techniques out there are positioned as a one-size-fits-all answer. What I want you to know is that there are actually three distinct phases on the path to recovery. And I'd love to share with you about these phases, what issues you must resolve to move to the next phase, and what kinds of support you'll need in order to move forward as quickly and completely as possible. The road to recovery is much easier when you know what stage you're in and what to do next. So don't hesitate, go to rachelgrantcoaching.com slash checklist and get your nine page guide today. Now back to our show. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Tammy Mobley, who's been so wonderfully and vulnerably and courageously sharing her story of uh, healing and thriving. And so let's just dig in a little bit here to red flags, because sometimes, yep, we're right in the middle of it and we're looking past it and we're, we're minimizing um, what's actually happening, but we need to, to pay closer attention. Can you share with us like some of the, the things that people should really be looking for and taking into account? So some of the red flags, like I said, that I missed was him being everywhere. I would go out with my girlfriend and we would drive down the street and he would be driving next to us. Like I would be in the car with my girlfriend and he would be driving next to us and we would just turn around, turn our head and he would be there waving at us. Mm. Um, I would come home and get ready to put the key in my door and he would be outside of my door um, just waiting, wow. waiting for me to come home. Um, just also just talking down to you, even though this, he's saying, oh, like I'm joking with you. No, like no one is a joke or, or not. Mm. Um just isolating you from your friends, you know, saying that I don't like her. I don't, I don't like her. You know, why don't you like her? Maybe because she sees something in you that we're not seeing. Um, right. So right. he's saying, I don't, I don't like her. Um, and if, when you just don't feel it, you know, I think sometimes that we feel it and I gut like that, that person is, is the one. And then sometimes we feel like there's something not right. Trust your gut instincts. Mm, Trust that. it when it's, yes. that, when you feel that in your gut, trusted because more than likely it's something saying you know what proceed with caution so this is what I tell my um my students I said you know imagine like you're at a traffic light and I said ask them I said so if the traffic light is green what do you do I say we go right he's telling us to go if the traffic light is yellow sometimes we proceed with caution we may slow down we may look before we go depending on what state you're in if you could still go but if you had a traffic light and miss it it's a red light we stop mm -hmm. but in relationships sometimes we at that red light and we're not stopping we're mm. thinking it's a yellow light and we're proceeding to go but when what happens is if you proceed to go through a red light what's going to happen you're going to get hit good man get hit, hit by a car you might get in a bad accident you might die and that's exactly how it is in an abusive relationship we're not we're okay with the green flags we can see that some and then we start tippy toeing when we see the yellow flags, but the red flags we don't even notice, and we keep on going like it's a green light. Mm. Oh, that's such a good analogy! <laughs> it's like blazing through the red lights, red light, red light, red light. Red oh my god! Like, you don't even see you're just like driving. Like, not even see just looking at you. How many times you red light? Be like, wait, was that a red light? <laughs> You're in that was your like, stage, right? You're in your stage, and you're like, oh, everything is so happy. Yeah. And then you go through and it's all a make bam. Yeah. And then that's how sometimes it is in an unhealthy relationship. You know, sometimes mm. the mood swing, you yes. come up and you're thinking everything is great. And then the mood swing, and that's when the red light hits, right? That's when you're like, okay, I, I hit the red light right now. So yeah. I think those are the things that are in our back of our mind that we really have to pay attention to. 
I know. I think that's so great. And for me, oh, man, the trap that I fell into over and over and over again was just rationalizing what was happening or turning it back around on myself. Like I really bought into the like, oh, well, he really is doing that because I did such and such. And if I just, you know, don't ever do that again. And um, but minimizing it, rationalizing it and making excuses you know, yeah. for it. Um, and so that kind of kept me, you know, going past those red lights when I really should have been stopping. Yeah. And then the other thing that I don't know if you did, but I did is not let anyone know about his flaws, oh, God, right? Everybody right. on the outside thought he was great. And that was because a lot of things that I'd said, right. I was, I, I never said anything negative mm-hmm. about him. I always said the great things about him. I always showed the great things that we were doing. So no one ever saw that. So when it came, really came down to it, when he was abusing me, everybody was like, really? Yeah. That what was happening? And I said, yes. So sometimes people didn't even believe it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's very much the case that that what you were saying earlier about kind of keeping up appearances and uh, for my person, it was that was super critical, right? That was a a place of like, you need to look right, you need to talk right, and this is how it's supposed to go. And, um, and there was a little bit of a sense of, you know, fear of talking about what was going to happen, shame, oh my gosh, just feeling ashamed. Mm -hmm. and and you know not wanting to be a failure like I should be able to do this why can't I do this you know and just all of that overwhelming I I think what I would have done what I wish I would have done you know back when I was in that circumstance was to imagine more if this was somebody else if this was a girlfriend or somebody that I loved who was in this experience you know what would I say to her because you know, for me, that often helps me snap out of, you know, my delusion, quite frankly, like right. when I really see, like, if I had a girlfriend coming to me and saying, like, this is what this man is doing, this is what this person is doing, <laughs> um, just acknowledging that, you know, certainly domestic violence sits within all kinds of relationships, you know, regardless of, um, you know, sexual orientation, certainly race, like it's all, it sits everywhere, but yeah, you know, just, gosh, if you could imagine, what you would say to someone else telling you that this is what they're experiencing, it can sometimes right. help give perspective. Okay, definitely, definitely. Mm. And again, you know what we we don't know what we don't know. Exactly that. Until yeah. so we come out on the other side and you say, "Wow, what?" <laughs> yeah. When you finally use your um use your voice and learn to learn to use your voice, mm-hmm. you're like, "Oh wait, I'm not dealing with this again." <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> So you've gone on and, and what are relationships like for you these days? How do you see yourself showing up differently? Um, I definitely use my voice more. Um, and it's funny because I ta- tell that to my mother and she said, you were always using your voice. You just wasn't using it in the correct way. Uh-oh. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, mama. <laughs> yeah. So using my voice and and being the voice for survivors, there's so many women that share information with me um, on my platform, on the radio show, or even just DMing me or just privately. And I'm just saying, so how can I help you? How can I support you? I was a peer counselor for domestic violence survivors um, also. So I would see about 30 clients per week. Whoa. And yeah, it was, it was heavy, um, very, very heavy. And I would tell them, you know, when clients came and sat in my chair and said, well, my girlfriend said that they wouldn't do this. And I said, well, you know what, if you were a fly in the wall in their home, you don't know what they're dealing with and you don't know what they're, mm. they're going through. And that cannot be accurate because I wouldn't have 30 clients a week. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Clients a week if everything was perfect. Um, so just being there and just saying, accept me for me. Like, this is who I am. Like, I met my husband. I met my husband online, not my current husband online. And my picture was really like very small, like a poster stamp. And he said, Why was this so small? I said, Again, because I was like, I didn't want you to really look at my face. I wanted you to get to know who I was yeah. and what I could bring to the table and the value that I have inside of me because now I know my work. Mm, I love that. I love your videos with your husband, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And you've developed this um, organization, Real Girls, mm-hmm. and you're working with teens. 
to educate them and support them. And I just love to hear your perspective. To my mind, you know, teenagers today have so much more information and awareness and capacity, but they're still babies, <laughs> you know? And, and so they, so. They, they, you know, and, but I'd love to hear just what your perspective is about the work that you're doing with teens and why that's important. And what are some of the lessons that you're really focused on passing down to the next generation? Right. And like you said, Rachel, like they have so much access to stuff, but they have access to a lot of unhealthy stuff. True. They have access to like the real housewives. They have mm. access to all the negative things. So actually when I'm in the classroom, a lot of them, the red flags that I know now that they're thinking that's a healthy relationship. Oh, it's okay that, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend is calling you many times or whatever. It's okay for this young ladies to say, okay, I text my boyfriend and he did not text me back right away and they're going to go keep on constantly texting and texting him back and forth and I say you know what he's a teenager maybe he his mom says he can't use the phone maybe he's playing a video game and they're just they don't even want to hear it mm, interesting. So I'm constantly in there like reprogramming and saying mm. this is what a healthy relationship looks like healthy relationship allows you to have other friends they're not even if they're on social media if they're dating someone they can't even like like that person's Ooh. you know face right <laughs> don't do it maybe, don't hit the maybe, like button. maybe you can no. like it but you can't maybe you can like it but you can't like you have to like it like a regular like you can't do a heart like mm -hmm. then it's like okay it may be something else so just trying to reprogram them and say you know what healthy relationships give each other space yeah. healthy relationships allow you to have your own friends healthy relationships allow you to make choices I'm in school mm. and a young lady in middle school, which is like 12 years old, said to me one day that she hid that every time between classes, she would hide in the bathroom because a boy was following her around in school. Mm. And I'm saying, what, what why what are you not on? telling administrators this? Why are you not saying anything? I'm glad we have a safe space for you to share this, but you are 11 years old. You should not have to hide in the bathroom from a young male and they're laughing about it and joking about it. So oh it's, gosh. I'm in here talking a lot about healthy relationships. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I wasn't even thinking about the layer of social media. I mean, yes. Yeah. Yay. They have access to things, but yeah, not great stuff. And right. just the whole <laughs> dynamic that the social media brings into navigating the relationships or even tracking each other. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. And what does, what does it actually mean to have a healthy relationship? I love the things that you were saying there about that. So thank goodness that we can start to, you know, train up, you know, these next generations and hopefully start to reduce and, and minimize the occurrence of, you know, domestic violence. It is a painful thing. I think it was also helpful in the stories that you were sharing there to just acknowledge that women can be abusers too. This is not a one-way street and right. that can happen. And that there are lots of great resources out there. Do you have any favorite um, resources on the topic that you would like listeners to know about? I would say contact the National Domestic Hotline at 1-800-799-7823. Sorry, <laughs> on the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Um, because it's just like, you and I are in an unhealthy relationship. We may not feel comfortable telling our friends because of the judgment, but if there's a secure hotline that you can call when no one knows and it can speak to you, go ahead and definitely speak with the advocate. Um, and I also encourage people, like if you are in an unhealthy relationship, go to a domestic violence agency, um, domestic, domestic and sexual violence agency, because they are trained to help you with trauma and speak to you about things like that. There's support groups that they can help you with. As a peer counselor, I had a client that um, her husband gave her a certain amount of money all the time. So she went to escape. So we, she would come to my office and we would give her things to act like she actually bought something just so she could save up her money so she could escape. So there's things that an agency that can do that maybe a lot of survivors don't even know that there are resources that can actually help you with, not just shelter services, yes, but financial yeah. services as well. Powerful. Thank you. Thank you for that. And one of the ways that you're using your voice these days is on your radio show, Curative Conversations. Tell us more about that. What's that all about? It's not just about domestic violence. You're really exploring no. so many things. And, and how can people tune in? And what can they expect to hear when they do? 
curative conversation a safe space to talk to heal and inspire so if you have any of those stories that you want to share if you just want to talk to heal or inspire to so come on it's on rechoice 101.3 at them um 10 a.m eastern time because <laughs> i know you're not eastern time <laughs> right 10, 10 a.m eastern time but it is streamed live on facebook um, and you can also tune in from your Alexa supported devices. And you're right. It started out as a platform for just domestic violence survivors. But there's so many um, people that come on. Last week, um, a lady came on and shared her story about losing her daughter to gun violence. Mm. Um, but even though it was a gun violence, it was she was with a guy that she only knew for 11 days. And Whoa. she did not, because she only knew him for 11 days, she went on a date with him and did not know that he was in the game. Wow. And that's another thing I think at, you know, another red flag is someone that's like meeting you so quickly. You know, her mother said that her daughter, like he gave her this new outfit, you know, in 11 days, somebody's buying you a, a new yeah. outfit. Look at those signs also, you know, you're still trying to get to know somebody. And on the 11th day, he was, they were in a car going on a date and someone pulled up on the side of them that was a rival gang member and killed her daughter and he survives. Damn it. That yeah. So that's another red flag, right? Just knowing that. somebody that's sort of Yeah, that's flag. just not. Oh yeah. my gosh, that mom. She uh, and the girl was and the young lady was only 20 years old when she lost her life. She was getting ready to check in um, mm-hmm. um to college like the next week for her, I think her sophomore year. Um yeah. So um, well, man, my heart breaks for that mom. It's just too much. It's too much that goes on in the world, but telling our stories and having safe spaces is healing. And, you know, and we learn from each other and we grow and we get to, you know, continue evolving and seeing better and better things. I have your, your website, flawless-imperfections.com. Um, what can people find there at your website? They can find my story there. They can look at um, reruns of the show, Curative Conversation. They can also link to Real Girls on their Responsive, Empowered, and Love. Awesome. So I'll be sure to have that link here in the show notes, folks. So you can definitely go over and support. Um, does Real Girls uh, accept donations? Do you have a, a way of receiving donations at this yes, time? Yes, we say accept donations. We accept sponsors. We accept guests. I know you're awesome. in the, <laughs> not on the East Coast, but if you are in the East Coast, we love for people to come in because yeah. even though it's my pro- program, I, I don't know they don't want to hear my voice all the time. <laughs> <laughs> So definitely you could you could send me an email at Tammy at flawless-imperfections.com and I would direct um, all your listeners to wherever they need to go for either for donation or sponsorship. Perfect. Yes, please support Tammy and the work that she is doing in the world. Uh, any final thoughts today for our listeners? Anything you most want them to know? I want them to know because this is my tagline is that your imperfections don't stop your greatness. Yeah. Okay. That's and no matter where you've been, <laughs> no matter what you've gone through, it, your current situation does not determine your final destination. So your imperfections don't stop your greatness. Yeah. Cheers to that, Tammy. Oh my goodness. It has been <laughs> such a joy. It's been a long time coming. We've been planning. Yes. We've been getting it on the calendar. <laughs> yes. And what I just, I knew it was going to be a fabulous conversation and it was, and I just thank you again so much for your time um, and for being here and being my guest and, and using your voice to make a difference in the world. Thank you for having me. Thank you for also your platform for elevating the voices of survivors um, as well. I know we didn't talk as much on um, sexual abuse because I know that's mainly your platform, but I was um, raped by my husband Mm -hmm. also. So um, there's a lot that went through that relationship that Mm -hmm. now I'm able to just share. I'm so glad. And I'm so not glad that that happened. I'm so glad that you're able to talk about it and, and to bring awareness to marital rape, because that is also Mm -hmm. an experience that often gets, you know, brushed under the rug or that's not a real thing. And like all of that. So I think there's probably, I didn't know it was a real thing either. I just, I didn't even know it was rape until I, when I went to the court and they said, you know, that was rape. And I just, I didn't even know Mm -hmm. there was such a thing as marital rape either. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you've come out bigger, better, stronger. <laughs> and, you know, never wish for anyone to have to live through the things that we do. But if we're living through them, 
then we can heal and we can move on and we can find, you know, so much joy and love and connection and be thriving. And you're such a representative and a model of that. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so that. much. Awesome. And thank you everybody for listening and for tuning in today, for joining us. Um, as always, if you'd like to make a donation and support of the podcast, you can go to bit.ly slash beyond surviving podcast donation. Don't forget to visit Rachel Grant Coaching to learn more about sexual abuse recovery coaching and check out the resources there. And then be sure to subscribe to the podcast and come back next time because we have so much more to share. And until then, take good care of you.